Hey there everyone, welcome to FJX 2000 Productions and another episode of Let's FJ. My name is Hayden and today we're going to be comparing my non-supercharged FJ Cruiser to this supercharged FJ Cruiser. It's going to be super awesome, so hopefully you stick around and watch the whole video because we're going to be racing these two things by the end. For starters, we're gonna talk about each of the FJ Cruisers, what's similar and then what's different. Both of these are 2008 Toyota FJ Cruisers. They come with the one GFRE engine, produces around 239 horsepower stock. Both of them have TRD exhaust, and that's pretty much where the similarities end. There's a lot of differences, as you can see, but they do both have front and rear steel bumpers, and they both have winches, so the weight will probably be roughly similar. As you can see, I do have some other modifications, skid plates, rock sliders, everything will add up and the weight won't be exactly the same, but they do have stuff like different size tires, just a little bit, mine are just a little taller, but both have roughly 33 to 34 inch tires, so not a huge difference. Mine also has a little bit more of a lift, but the biggest difference with this FJ Cruiser, as I said, is that it has the supercharger. It has specifically TRD's supercharger. And uh, the owner of this FJ, his name is Craig, and it has the supercharger that he bought with it when he bought the FJ. So he's had this supercharger since day one. And how many miles have you put on it, Craig? 188,000. 188,000. So it is well broken in at this point. Uh, but it still produces a lot of power. He still loves driving it. He can't give it up and it's going to be really cool to test the two of these vehicles. Mini Cooper! Both of these FJs do have TRD catback exhaust systems, but my FJ also has the TRD cold air intake, while Craig's FJ has the K&N intake. His intake is designed to take in a bit more air, which is really good for the supercharger. My intake, however, with the TRD, it's connected straight up to my snorkel. And some companies do advertise that you can use a snorkel with a supercharger, but you do experience some amount of air loss just because it is a restriction point of the system. One of the big questions when it comes to FJ Cruisers and supercharging them is what is it gonna do to your mileage, your fuel mileage? With my FJ Cruiser, with all the added modifications, the larger tires, the lift, just you name it, I'm only getting around 13 to 14 miles per gallon typically, but uh, if I'm lucky, 15. Okay. However, for Craig, how much miles per gallon do you get on your FJ Cruiser typically? I average about 15, whether it's highway or city. Great, yeah, 15. So with my FJ only getting 13 to 14 miles per gallon and Craig's getting 15 miles per gallon consistently, even with the supercharger, that's pretty cool. One person on Facebook even brought up the idea that the power to weight ratio on a supercharged FJ is a little better than a normal FJ. So perhaps even if I did supercharge my FJ, I would get a little more power. It would be able to handle the added weight a little more and maybe my fuel economy would increase. However, it's hard to say because you do upgrade the fuel injectors, you are burning more fuel technically. So maybe if you had like completely stock FJ compared to a completely stock FJ that you then supercharge, maybe in that case you would experience some fuel mileage loss. But I do think typically people do experience some degree of loss when compared to stock. So when it comes to FJ cruisers and supercharging, that added horsepower that you're adding to the engine does add strain to certain components. And with certain setups where people are producing tons of horsepower, they do experience certain failures like differential failures, axle failures, transmission issues, or even just engine failure altogether. So have you had any issues like that, Craig? Not, not yet. Not, not yet. That's great. Because I think with the TRD setup, since Toyota had its hand in developing it, it's only adding around 65 pounds of torque and like 56 horsepower to produce around 304 horsepower. With the intake and the exhaust added, it might bump those numbers up more to like 315 or even 320. So he's definitely producing more horsepower than my 239 horses that this FJ engine puts up. But with my TRD intake and exhaust, it might bump my numbers up in, you know, a perfect world to like 250, something like that. He's still 50, 60 horsepower ahead of me though. So I expect that the results will reflect that as well. 
but do keep in mind that higher horsepower setups like the URD supercharger that adds like 182 horsepower to your engine, those are the people that are typically experiencing issues with broken axles, things like that. Uh, Craig, have you ever had any issues with the power added to your FJ making any issues for you? No, Nothing. not at all. That's great. Well, that, I think that's to be expected with TRD. They do have, they even advertised that with a TRD supercharger, you could go 100,000 miles maintenance free, which is really great to hear. It's nice to know that Toyota parts, TRD parts, they're going to last a good long time. But you can watch my other FJ Cruiser supercharger video if you want more details about maintenance and things to look up if you're wanting to service your supercharger. But anyways, I think we've had enough about talking about FJ Cruisers, the similarities, the differences. You can see them on camera. They're not exactly the same, but it's nice that they are both 2008s. They both have five-speed automatic transmissions. So when it comes to testing, we're just going to floor it, and that's going to be the readings. It'll be really equal. We're going to get some tests where we're going to compare 0 to 60 times. We're going to time it, and we're also going to just race them head-to-head, -head, and we're going to figure out which FJ is faster. I have my suspicions as to which one will do better, but we're going to see it on camera.
Right here we had some technical audio issues, so I will go ahead and voice over what was said. Well everyone, there you have it. Supercharged FJ versus non-supercharged FJ. Obviously the supercharged FJ has way more acceleration, it just takes off and keeps gaining no matter what. Every test we did, it always pulled ahead. It's awesome. One of the awesome benefits of having a supercharger is you have all that extra power to work with. When you're supercharged, it makes stuff like trailers so much easier. Craig says that he has a trailer that he likes to tow, and it's probably not even there at that point. No, like I said, it's no problem. Supercharging does give you a lot of extra horsepower, but for off-roading situations like rock crawling, it might not actually be that beneficial. You're actually going to benefit more from upgrading tires and suspension, or just careful driving and better wheel placement will get yourself up obstacles. But for Baja racing, where you do want speed, that's where a supercharger would really do well. Or even just for street stuff, racing or towing or driving at elevation. I will say that we are currently at around 5,500 feet of elevation, so our vehicles will act differently than ones at sea level, so that's something to keep in mind. But ultimately, supercharging is an awesome addition for the FJ Cruiser. I'm sure Craig would agree. A lot of people say that it adds power to the FJ that should have been there from the factory in the first place. People complain that the FJ seems underpowered, but with the supercharger, that's no longer something to worry about. So check out FJ Cruiser Superchargers if you want to. Thank you so much Craig for letting us come and race the FJs, do some tests, and see what the differences are. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, if you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And again, if you haven't seen my previous supercharger video and you want to learn more about superchargers, superchargers on FJ Cruisers in particular, be sure to check it out. It's a great video. And I'll catch you all next time, so take care.